You know, before anything, it's dope seeing like women's basketball get so much attention. Angel Reese came out with a comment yesterday. She said, I'll look back in 20 years and be like, the reason why we're watching women's basketball is not because of one person, it's because of me too. Started from the national championship game and I've been dealing with this for two years now. And understanding like, yeah, negative things have probably been said about me, but honestly, I'll take that because look where women's basketball is. People are talking about women's basketball, but you never would think that we'd be talking about women's basketball. People are pulling up to games. We got celebrities coming to games, sold out arenas, like just because of one single game. And just looking at that, like I'll take that role. I'll take the bad guy role and I'll continue to take that on and be that for, the, for my teammates. And if I want to be that, and I know I'll go down in history, I'll look back in 20 years and be like, yeah, the reason why we watching women's basketball is not just because of one person. It's because of me, too. And I want y'all to realize that. She's not lying. She is telling the truth. You always need that drama in sports. So we, we will be looking back and saying, like, yo, those two girls really made an impact. That's cool and all. Now, I have to say, I'm happy for, like, the rookies and everybody like that. I've, I've advocated for them on, on the past videos and everything. Now, I'm not the vet to the WNBA. <laughs> These vets, they you guys watch these clips, and you can't sit here and tell me they do not like some of these rookies. Like, some of this is crazy. So somebody said, bro, these WNBA players really hate these rookies. Phenomenal. Let's take a look at what's to come for the Seattle Storm over the next few games. The game she on said, ill. She was just trying to talk to the girl cross. Few games. The game on Let's keep it a buck. Nobody in basketball is being guarded like this. Face guarded behind the ball is madness. No one besides Steph Curry. But this, but for a rookie, like, I don't even think LeBron was being guarded like this his rookie year. Angel Reese getting clothesline. Couldn't get the roll. Get right here. You no know, stuff is real. When they they even got the 2K girl to come out and speak. Oh, Rachel, this is her comments on it. But at this point, the WNBA is getting downright embarrassing. Not only for the league, but also for women as a whole. And you're not gonna gaslight me into thinking that the media is the one who created this narrative that a lot of players don't like Caitlin Clark. At this point, it is clear as day. We've seen so many examples of hard fouls, dirty plays, and teams celebrating when she gets chucked to the floor. We have also not heard from any of the other star players and veterans in the WNBA. Why aren't they speaking out about some of this? Whether fans, media's players like it or not, most of the new eyeballs that are on the WNBA right now are there because of Caitlin Clark. Just like in USA Gymnastics, Simone Biles is the reason a lot of people watch gymnastics. Yes, there's undoubtedly other great women on that team, but most of the fans come to watch gymnastics for Simone Biles. Just like in golf years back, Tiger Woods was the reason that sport gained the popularity that it did. And yes, it's a great rookie class in the WNBA, but Caitlin Clark is the reason. Do we really think that, God forbid, she gets hurt for the rest of the season, that ticket sales and viewership are going to be the same? No chance. Yet is loving all of these fight clips that they get to upload because that's what's getting clicks. We're not highlighting how well the women are playing on the court. We're highlighting which player is going to hurt Caitlin Clark the most. She came out of last night's game because she got hurt. And also, us as women at this point are giving the men more ammo to talk crap about us. It goes back to the point of women not supporting other women and women willing to sabotage another woman at the expense of themselves and at this point the expense of the entire league there's way too much talent in the WNBA for this to be what the media and everyone is talking about and in the same token it is turning off a lot of these new fans who came to this league whether you like it or not because of Caitlin Clark I don't understand how it's gotten this insane this quick, but we need to do better. It's been a rough lead. There's been a lot of like drama even prior to this going on. A lot of like the stuff that's getting highlighted is stuff that's oriented around Caitlyn Clark. I 100% agree with that. Or I said in my other videos, I said if Caitlyn Clark got hurt, oh, that shit gonna drop. I've been saying that. We're not saying the vets shouldn't make it hard. We're saying that like similar to the NBA, how LeBron, will, even if he loses, like he'll say like, yo, I love the young talent like Anthony Edwards, SGA, or I love um this player that player they should be doing that for their rookies like yo i love the way cameron is playing right now i love the way so-and-so but instead they get on post game they talk about oh i'm not talking about so-and-so post game they get on twitter and talk nonsense and then you wonder why people have their reaction we're just saying give give the rookies their props you guys don't give them enough praise don't back your teammates you know it's a lot of different stuff a lot of that shit should be different especially for the light they're putting on the lead right now it could get to the point where like people just don't want to see that type of shit no more so if we're being real play of these players aren't selling arika didn't arika drop 40 points the other night wouldn't that make more people want to watch her game why is there not more light on her like there's like the play isn't selling Arika drop 40 okay cool asia wilson's playing amazing basketball like her numbers are through the roof right now ridiculous okay they're not making a segment for that on first take they don't care jj knocked me down she didn't get a flagrant one though yeah she got a regular foul but it was the same thing it was the same thing but we, we can't pick and choose what players get flagrant fouls and flagrant ones oh 100 percent okay.
This is the clip she's referring to right here. This is the clip she's referring to. Um, that's her clip, and then this is Katie and Kelly's clip. Kennedy Carter now with 12 points off. To be honest with you, on Angel's clip, she was trying to run in front of the girl. That's why the girl did that. And Caitlyn's Clark clip, she just ran up and like, it wasn't like necessary for the girl to do that. But it wasn't equally necessary for the girl to bump Jerice like that. So she's right, but slightly two different scenarios. But she has a point. Stephen A. Smith went on yesterday. He said, Stephen A. Smith said, who talks about the WNBA? Who talks about women? Who talks about women's sports more than first take? Monica responded, Stephen A. Respectfully with your platform. You could have been doing this three years ago if you wanted to. What she said is blatantly false. I'm not accusing her of lying. I'm accusing her of not knowing because she's not a liar. She's an honorable person. She must not have known. The WNBA, could I have done more? Well, guess what, Monica McNutt? I could have done less. Who's done more? Hell, a legitimate argument could be made that the WNBA wasn't doing it for themselves. The commissioner of the WNBA came on first take to thank us for what we was doing for the WNBA. Who else was doing it? Where were these people at? We address one issue after another after another. Is sports fine? Is social issues fine? Is politics is fine? Is gender issues fine? The list goes on and on. First take is the place. Who's the executive producer of first take? Who handpicked every single contributor to the show? Because more than two years ago, Jimmy Pataro, the president of ESPN, Dave Roberts, an executive editor at ESPN, handed that responsibility to me, and I didn't even ask for it. You don't believe me? Ask them. You know their numbers. Jimmy Pataro. This was Monica. Monica responds to internet reaction to her exchange with Stephen A. I do want to address the end of that clip. I genuinely was surprised by the reaction. And I did not intend to make it personal. But when I look at Stephen A and my relationship with Stephen A, he the head honcho at ESPN as far as I'm concerned. Yes, and I have been yes, in this absolutely. women's basketball space for so long and have been privy to many a conversation, pushing and pitching and asking for space. So as from where I sit, if SA says, let's talk about it, it's gonna be discussed, right? Right. He and I have had a conversation tonight. Okay, cool. There are things at play that maybe I did not consider when I made that statement. But what I do stand by is that the way that the WNBA is being covered in the last, this season just started in May, this particular season is at a different fervor and tenor than it was three years ago. That is simply because of Caitlin Clark, this Ricky class that came in. So like, I'll be honest, I started watching when um Caitlin and Angel came on the scene. I saw a little bit of like Kelsey Plum and Asia Wilson, you know, when they had their final sting. But besides that, I, I'm not going to say her and lie. I wasn't watching. I mean, there's been a lot of hype on it and it was sparked by Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and it's the Iowa LSU rivalry and that just branched off to everything else. And you can also make an argument that if neither of them decided to join the WNBA, we probably wouldn't even be having this discussion. I definitely would have made this video. Um, um, factors go into that, be that as it may. But three years ago, we were not having these conversations about the WNBA as we are now. And that is just a fact. Yeah, well, we weren't having this conversation three months ago. Fair enough. But, right? but, but you said, Monica, it's never too late to do the right thing. Absolutely. And and I think that some people will be like, oh, nobody was talking about, like you. I heard you at the end of that show. You lucky Molly had to go to break. You talking about something. Monica, you proving his point because nobody was talking about Kayla Clark after that three years ago. <laughs> Southern sass back there. Now, this is where this is where we have to really argue and and tussle with this idea of cart before the horse or yeah. or, or horse before the cart, right? And I know we don't TV work, Shannon. Just like you said, Ocho, you can talk about the Cowboys, you can talk about the Lakers. Like there are these things that hit, and so I understand the idea that the WNBA may not have been drawing the same numbers that it is now three years ago. But again, two things can be true. That doesn't necessarily mean that those women, prior to the arrival of this rookie class, were still not worthy of coverage. That's what it is. But yeah, y'all let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section. And um, it's always at your boy.